So what did Med Medvedev say? Who, who was Medvedev? Medvedev is an engineer who wrote the most um, accurate description that I've seen of all of the events relating to the Chernobyl explosion and accident. Um, in a book I've got here, quite hard, difficult to get this book, but it's in English. Um, it's translated from the Russian. And Medvedev said that the director of the uh, uh, Chernobyl, you know, uh, power station, all of them, um, was a bloke who had been, uh, and he was the guy who ordered the experiment, the, the experiment that, that ended up, you know, in the accident. And he overrode all of the objections to that. Uh, and he'd been in a very serious car accident about six or seven months, I think, before this happened. Before he, he started this experiment, yeah? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And and his wife and chil child or wife and children were killed or something. And he was in a really terrible state and he wasn't well at all. And the implication is that somebody had kind of, you know, threatened him and, and, and caused this accident in some way, you know, and told him that he must blow up the power station or else, you know, they would kill him as well or something. Or, that you know, it was some kind of... It was the implication in the book anyway that it was like all was not quite, you know, as it seemed and that this that, that the real fault was this guy that he done, he did it. Yeah. What um, which book is that? It's called The Truth About Chernobyl by Dmitry Medvedev. Okay, okay. I've got I think I've got it somewhere. I have I know, you know, it's 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 on my shelf somewhere. You should really read it. It's a fabulous book. It really is. It, I mean, I'm sure what this fellow Cap, Kaplan or Carpan or whatever says will be much the same Carpan, as what yeah. Medvedev. Yeah, well, it'll be the same as what Medvedev said. But of course, I don't speak Russian, so I wouldn't be able to. to but I mean, what you could do is I could bring Medvedev along for you, and you could see if it fits in with. It. Well, you haven't got. Have you got Carpan? No, no. It. I will not. I don't have time to dig into this. But no. uh, it's good enough that we get it into video. Anyway, I think it's certainly quite feasible that that was all engineered by somebody. I think that, I mean, I don't think... And they were planning to, to bring down the uh, Soviet Union, and this yeah. was the starting point. Yes, Everybody knows right. that, that Soviet Everybody Union knows that this never got point. over Chernobyl. And Legasov t uh, committed suicide because of all of that, too. Yeah, yeah, he couldn't... Uh, and, I mean, the question uh, arises whether Legasov knew that it was some kind of fit up and he didn't really commit suicide but somebody toss, to, to, bumped him off I think this is much more likely you know because at some point he was going to come out and say or they were afraid that he was going to come out and say look here 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 this yeah. other guy you know engineered the explosion yeah. um, and uh, you know I, I think I have to come clean about this and they were afraid that if he did that you know the CIA or involvement or whoever it was um, would, would, would emerge. And then, yeah. you know... Um, yeah, that's so, so, so So obvious. then they, they, they committed him to commit suicide. And the other person that committed suicide, committed suicide, was Petra Kelly, the head of the German Green Party, who, who was quite a big, a big person in anti-nuclear. In those days, the Green Party were terribly anti-nuclear, certainly the German Greens. And, and when was Petra this? Kelly. This was 92. Um, in 92, Petra Kelly, with a chap called Sh uh, Shevchenko, or, or, yeah, I think that was his name, Shevchenko, who was one of the main people involved in the cleanup, they had, a, uh, they had negotiated in Berlin um, a, a contract for a six-week series with German television to talk about the health effects of Chernobyl which he knew about and which were, of course, at that time being covered up by the WHO and the IAEA and, the, and, and everybody else. Um, and then what happened was that, uh, and she met with my friend Ernest Sternglass, Professor Sternglass of the University of Pittsburgh in, Ber in Berlin then, and she told him this, and three weeks later she was dead and she had committed suicide. Uh, or at least it wasn't that she committed suicide, she was shot by her, her East German lover, whose name was Gerd Bastian, who was an ex-general in the in the in the in the in the East German security service, the Stasi, and he supposedly murdered her and then shot himself. Oh gosh! But, but there were lots of there were an awful lot of questions about that because the door that was leading to the place where they were both found dead in bed was open. So and and it was a cold night, you know, and there would have been no reason for that door to be open. So the 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 the, the suggestion was. That of course they were both murdered, 
because this um, and because the other thing is that this bloke Shevchenko then disappeared and he phoned up Ernest Sternglass from Mexico and said he was on the run but then we never heard any more about that so he and he and he said that they've killed Petra you know and I'm getting out of here because they're going to get me next <laughs> Oh, God. I know, I know. And then the other thing is that the head of the British Green Party, there was a woman called, um, God, what was her name now? Pa Parkin. That's right, her name was Sarah Parkin. And I knew her. I've sat her on my lap, actually, you know, and give her a little nuzzle at one point. Um, she was the head of the British Green Party, but the interesting thing is she was the wife of a chap called um, Max Parkin, who was the head of the cancer research, the International Cancer Research Agency in Lyon in France. And those are the people who, are, who, who control all of the data relating to cancer all over the world. Now, the, 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 the question is, why would Sarah Parkin then just become the head of the British Green Party when she was connected to this guy in France who was uh, in charge of all of the cancer? And what Sarah Parkin always did was she attacked me for arguing that there were increases in cancer after Chernobyl. And she actually wrote a book in about, I think, 94, she wrote a book about Sarah Parkin. 93 or 94, she wrote a book about Sarah Parkin, talking about her life and, you know, because they were kind of both heads of Green Parties, and she knew her, and saying what a great person she was and this and that, and saying for, for sure she had been murdered by Gerd Bastian and there was no problem with it, and it was all straightforward and this and that. Yeah. Um, and my, my friend... Uh, a Scottish Dave who uh, met her at a party in Southern Ireland and she went on and on about how Chris Busby was a nutcase and you know all this stuff about cancer after Chernobyl was a load of nonsense and, and you know blah 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 oh, so you know lots, lots, of, lots, of little, lots of little stories around all of that you know which make me think that there was a, a conspiracy yeah 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 what a great life you had to live up through all of this <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is nobody knows it all, do they? That's yeah, the that's why we'll keep it on video and at when least. You, when you come out with this stuff, you just sound like a nutcase, you know, talking about lizards from outer space and all that. No, you don't. This is your life. Mm. This is nothing about... Uh... Anyway, that's all real. Because uh, uh, um, that German green, Petra Kelly, she was a great woman. And she uh, she she uh, was coming to England for, for uh, to give a talk for us um, in this constituency in Wales where we were standing, my friend Bill Pritchard, in the parliamentary election uh, on, on the question of the power, nuclear power station, which they were trying to restart, even though it had cracks in the, it had cracks in the, uh, in the reactor pressure vessel. Uh, and they were hoping to start it and run it at a higher temperature to anneal the cracks. Can you imagine such nonsense? Anyway, in the end, they didn't. We we went and and sat down and chained. Anyway, up. but but uh, but uh, if we talk about this thing about the Krypton, who might have been changing the climate change, which is yes, yes. Well, the Kryp Krypton eighty five is released by nuclear power stations in very large amounts, very large amounts, and it could well be. One theory is that it's the Krypton eighty five that is the cause of the childhood leukemias. Um, that, that are being found near nuclear power stations because Krypton 85 has a quite long half-life I forget I think 12 years or something and so and it's and, and it's just endlessly released by nuclear re fission and so and it, since it's a gas it can't be constrained so it just comes out the chimneys and goes into the atmosphere and it's been increasing cons consistently you know since they started having nuclear energy and according to Soji Sawada who, who is the emeritus professor of physics at the University of I uh, uh, can't remember, somewhere in, in Japan, I, I should know. Anyway, he's a friend of mine. Um, he says that, that it's so bad that liquid air, now when they liquefy air, it, it's actually a radiation hazard because of the concentration of Krypton-85 inside it. It's a beta emitter. Um, and, uh, of course, because it's a beta emitter, it emits an electron when it decays, uh, and that electron causes ionization of the air. And so, of course, uh, the air that becomes electrically charged, and that certainly alters the um, it certainly alters the weather because of the because of the way in which thunderstorms, you know, will form and electrical charges in the atmosphere will alter the the, the flow of, of gases and so forth. And most important, of course, it gets into the outer atmosphere, gets into the stratosphere, and alters the effects of of ozone. It increases ozone depletion. So you get an, a change in the ozone layer that's caused not only by chlorofluorocarbons, which was the original thing, but nobody's mentioned the fact that Krypton-85 also 
will ionize um, gases out in the in the uh, in, in in the ozone layer and then alter the, the, the concentrations of, of, of ground level ozone, uh, ground level ultraviolet, and, and then therefore tropospheric ozone. So yeah, sure, absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I certainly, of course, whether or not that's the main driving force for climate change, who knows? I mean, there are all sorts of things happening with climate change. There could be other stuff as well. But it would, Im uh, they, there is this <coughs> um, Legasov, had warned already in 1984 yes, well, that a uh, after 2000 the climate would be changed just by Krypton effect. Well, I can't imagine that he would have been able to prove that, but I mean certainly he would have had a theory about it and maybe he was right. Maybe he was right, who knows. Um, I mean, I think myself that Lagasov, uh, Lagasov's suicide was rather suspicious too given that Legasov was in charge of all of that stuff to do with Chernobyl. And so, you know, would have known what was going on. And it could well be that, like Petra Kelly, you know, he knew too much. And so he was also suicided. But still we have the trouble in our hands that, that uh, fairly... Oh, almost nobody is uh, having focus at Krypton trouble in, in the climate change and air that we well, also sure, have to, dr sure. to breathe. And it's what? It's better emitter? Um, it's very the the, the concent yeah, it's a beta emitter, but the concentrations in ordinary air would not be enough to cause much of an effect. But any you know, but any effect is much of an effect. We well, shouldn't ha have be yeah, breathing it, some kind there. of such stuff. Sure, but if it comes to that, I mean, I've been measuring radiation in the environment since 1995, and I can tell you that it's gone up by 50 percent since 1995. Just the normal background radiation in the environment, maybe. Yeah, about fifty percent. Okay, but but okay, back to back to weather. Uh, England is sort of disappearing from the surface of uh, the planet soon, uh, and the oh. Gulf Stream has stopped. Uh, come on, the, and 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 the ice cubes, uh, ice poles. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, well, and, but mean, no, I... but nobody is stopping these monsters. No, that's right. Well, I mean, you know, nature itself will stop this monster eventually, of course. After the England is uh... after England disappeared. Well, I shall just uh, I shall, I've got my boat, so I shall just float off in my boat and England. Can yeah, but sink. this is really silly, silly serious. <laughs> it's, I, I'm absolutely serious. I'm absolutely serious. I, I, I I'm pretty certain that there will be a catastrophic sea level rise in the next five years, um, and possibly ten years. But I, I, my own guess, it would be five years, uh, and and then we're going to see some hor horrifying. And, so uh, please, you know, please, uh, people, close the power stations now. Well, for that for sure. That stop, for sure. stop, Krypton flow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Certainly. I mean, my own feeling for Krypton, apart from the, uh, apart from the the arguments about about. Uh, global weather changes, you know, is that Krypton itself is, is, is very dangerous for people who live near nuclear, downwind of nuclear power stations. I mean, we, I, I was on the Isle of Alderney in 1998 with a scintillation counter, and, and I was measuring Krypton um, emissions from Cap de la Hague, 12 miles away to the east, and they were causing the, the leaves of the trees on, on the island of Alderney to be burnt on the side facing the power station, uh, the the, um, the the site, and on the side away from the site, they were not burned. But it's so, not the only Krypton there, huh? It's not, but Krypton is the main one, actually. Krypton is the main, you know, you you the single main dangerous emitter from because it's a gas, you see, and it's very heavy too. It's very very dense. So when it's emitted, it, it stays on the ground and it rolls along the ground. Of course, you can't see it. But you can imagine it rolls along the ground and it just blows away from the power station as a huge plume of this invisible radioactive gas. And it ends up on the island of Alderney, which is about 12 miles away, 12 kilometers away across the, across the sea, directly downwind of Cap de la Hague when the wind's blowing from the east. And then you can measure it with your scintillation counter. In fact, I was on the BBC with my scintillation counter when one of these plumes came across and, and the whole scintillation counter went completely mad. And it, and, and it, came, it was done on the BBC News, BBC Southwest. We, we, we did it live. What? Yeah. 
God yeah, gracious! I know. And Where was this? That, they threw me off the. After that, they threw me off the island. They ran. They ran me out. Of, uh, uh, you know. They told. Of course, them because they would have to airplane. evacuate the island. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, we did, the story of Alderney is in. Well, that when German was this? Ninety-eight. That was in that German, you know, that German program about sea dumping, where I where I go to Alderney and we wander about. With yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's me. quite recent, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's this year. Hmm. Oh, last year. Okay. Thanks so much for this interview, and uh, let's hope that the right people are listening, and we can make yeah, yeah, yeah. a okay. difference. <laughs> <laughs>